The time now is half past eight. to get the post. Anything interesting? No, circular. Oh, well, last time then. Does it feel strange? Um, a little, perhaps. Still. Goodbye then, dear, and I'll be seeing you at 6.30 then. Yes. You look a little worried. No, no, just preoccupied thinking of all there is to do, moving and so on. Oh, don't you worry about that. We'll just let the removers pack everything. Yes. Well, you'll be late. Yes, and that would never do, would it? First time late on my last day. <laughs> Goodbye, then. Somehow this morning, from Mary and now you, I get the impression that you see me as a person driven by compulsive habits. So I'm just demonstrating my flexibility. My goodness, where will this end? Well, who knows? I mean, perhaps before the end of the day, you may be fighting me off to protect your honor. How do you know I fight? <laughs> oh, I see, I may be wasted ten years. Too late to regret it now. Mm. <laughs> ah, well, if we're not to embark on a torrid passion, let's deal with the day. And now there are a dozen letters from your colleagues all over the place wishing you well. They're on the desk. I've sent acknowledgments saying that you'll answer them later. Oh dear, seems the first few months of my retirement will be taken up with writing. I thought all of it was going to be. Well, yes, but not polite letters to people who are only sad to see me go because they didn't get my chair. That's hard. Yes. Morning, Mr. Tomlin. Morning, Professor. Um, I'm sorry I missed my tutorial yesterday. I spent the day in bed getting over a stomach upset. And what upset your stomach? Alcohol the night before? <laughs> well, if the truth be told, yes. Um, I wondered if you'd marked my essay. Yes, I have. Thanks. Gamma. You've put punctuation. Does that fail the whole essay? Well, it depends. It's only one uh, punctuation mistake, actually, but um, a serious one. You left out the quotation marks at the beginning and end of the essay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Professor. One has to be very careful at cribbing. Because it happens that the article you copied that from was written by a fellow student of mine at Cambridge. Uh -huh. Now, I might have given you a gamma plus, but his style is no better now than it was then. <laughs> You uh, should have picked someone better. I'm sorry our association ends on such a note, Mr. Tormey. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, too. Of course, you know, you do have um, considerable ability. And I recommend you develop it, not drown it. Yes, sir. You know, you should remember the golden academic rule. Copy from one source is plagiarism. To 
copy from two is research. Good luck. Thank you. You too, Professor. Madam President, members of the Union, I'm most grateful for this presentation. This lunchtime, my colleagues gave me a decanter and glasses. <laughs> so um, I shall hang this above them as a reminder of the Students' Union. And uh, following your example, will then use the decanter with great moderation. <laughs> this morning, I gave my last lecture as head of department to my second year Shakespeare group. And by happy chance, I was dealing with Shakespeare's last plays. Um, I'd better explain why it was a happy chance for the benefit of the unfortunates among us who are not reading English literature. <laughs> um, in the last plays, Shakespeare, growing old, moves on from his great tragic vision of the world and comes to see hope in the young. Now, he hasn't become senile and foolish. Uh, the world he knows is still corrupt. But in the young, he finds the innocence and love that could redeem it. Well, I understand what he felt. And I recall now Miranda's words as I look around here. Oh, wonder. How many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. Hello. No, this is not Professor Brett's house. Oh, no, I'm not Mrs. Brett. Not at all. Goodbye. It's hard, I know, to look outside these walls and find a brave new world. And I know that many of you can contemplate your future only with uncertainty, even anxiety, as you look for a means of fulfilling yourselves in work. But I, too, am not senile and foolish. And I, too, persist in hoping that the world can be redeemed by the love and faith of the young. And I believe this because I believe that your love and faith is not untutored. You are receiving here, I trust, that liberal, liberating education that can sustain you as you struggle to improve the world that I and my generation to our shame have left you. And even if you can't find the work for which your education has fitted you, it is not wasted. It is a value of and for itself. Now hang on to that. And in saying farewell, I finally thank you for the privilege I've had in sharing your lives. I wish you well in all your endeavors. And profoundly, even selfishly, hope that you will do a better job than we did. <laughs> started this afternoon, but she hoped to be gone by this evening. Oh, damn. Well, I'll give her a ring. Oh, she's going to bed and taking the phone off the hook. Oh, dear. Well, I don't have time to go home before the VC's reception. Oh, no. Still, nothing I could do if I did, I suppose. No. No. Yeah, you wouldn't care to do these, would you not? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Professor, 
Do you really believe what you said at our presentation? I don't mean to sound impertinent. Uh, no, you're not being... Well, uh, well, of course I do. I know that it's conventional wisdom that it's better to be unemployed if you can read and so on. But don't you think that disappointing expectations may be worse than not raising them at all? Well, I'd have to say that a university degree ought to be a mark of a liberal education, um, either in arts or science, and not merely a vocational training. That isn't our job. Our job is to educate the whole person uh, to fit him for whatever. Even unemployment? Well, that is the hardest case, but um, yes, I'd have to say even unemployment. I can't think how it happened, but a Senate meeting was convened earlier this week, and unfortunately it seems that Professor Brett was not sent a notice of summons. However, the oversight was noticed in time, and only one piece of business was transacted in his absence. Professor Edward Brett, it gives me great pleasure to tell you the Senate unanimously decided to offer you the honorary chair of Emeritus Professor of Literature at this university for the rest of your lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's lovely. Could I? Yes. Oh, thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Mary? Hello, Penelope. D did I wake you? Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's nothing serious. I was just wondering if your mother was there. Oh. Well, you see, I've just returned from a farewell party at the university and she isn't here. No. Oh, I'm sure there's some simple explanation. She may have gone round to Faye's. Well, I can hardly phone it this time. I can't wake the entire town. Yes, all right. I'll, I'll ring as soon as she gets in. All right. Good night, dear.
Haven't you been to bed? Oh, I must have dozed off. You haven't heard any more? Um... No. No, I, I rang the police last night, but there were no reports of any accidents or anything. Oh, God. Well... Oh, look at you. Like something the cat dragged in. Come on, Dad. She'll turn up. I don't understand it, Penny. She's never done anything like that. Never. I'll get you some coffee. Oh, yes, that'd be good. Mm. Oh, God, I'm stiff. Why don't you go and have a bath? Freshen up. You'll feel a lot better. Yes. Dad, Mum's been away a lot this last year. Why are you so worried now? Well, you know your mother, meticulous. I mean, she may have been away, but I always knew where she was because she always let me know and left food out and so on. We ought to let Simon know. Oh. Would you do it? I never know what to say to him. I'll ring with his lab. Later this morning, he won't be there yet. Oh, Daddy. You must know something. What, wasn't there a note or anything? Not really. Well, just... Sorry. When did this come? Yesterday morning. The bank asking you to come round? What for? I don't know. We've been doing a lot with them, bridging loans and buying the cottage and so on. So I suppose it was just the first piece of paper to hand. Good of you to drop by so quickly. Oh, not at all. I saw in the morning's paper that you've been elected Emeritus Professor. Oh, really? Oh, I haven't seen the local paper this morning. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. A man of leisure now. Yes. Good. I just wanted to chat about your current account. Mrs. Brett told me you're moving to Rye quite soon. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Well, I'm sure, what with the moving and so on. I wondered how long you wanted your overdraft to continue. Overdraft? Yes, the 5,000 overdraft. 5,000 pounds? Yes. Um, 5,210, actually. Um... Mrs. Brett said it was to pay contractors in Rye for central heating. Central heat? But uh, the cottage is already centrally heated. Oh. I have a note of a telephone conversation earlier in the week. The 9th, Monday. Overdraft of £5,000, a bridging loan on central heating, lump sum on retirement due end August. Well, I I'm afraid you, you catch me at a loss, Mr Humphreys, because uh, Mrs Brett looks after all the financial affairs. Uh, she used to work in a bank, you see. <laughs> My problem is that the day before yesterday, I received a cheque for £500, which put the account over the agreed £5,000. And actually, this morning, I received another cheque for £1,000. Well, I don't understand quite... You do well. understand that I do oh, have to course, ascertain... Oh, of course. <laughs> Would you like to have a talk with Mrs Brett? But I do have to know by lunchtime what to do about this cheque. Oh, uh, that's a little difficult because I'm afraid she's gone away for a few days. You do see, Professor, I do have to pay this cheque or return it today. Return it? But there's no question of that, surely. Transfer 6,000 from our deposit account to cover the overdraft. It's silly to be paying interest anyway. But you've closed your deposit account. There was nothing in it. Oh, but that's impossible. There's over £100,000. It was the money to complete the purchase of the cottage next week. Professor Brett, on May the 2nd, you've transferred... £10,000 to your current account. Mrs. Brett said it was to pay the deposit on the house. Yes, that's right. That left £45,000. Oh, no, no, there must be more, surely, because an endowment policy matured last um, January. And it was for over £90,000. Yes. And by April it had been transferred in units of five and £10,000. Until by May it was £55,000. Mrs. Brett said you were buying antique furniture for your retirement home. As you can see, the rest was transferred in two units the last two weeks ago. Mrs. Brett said the purchase had already been completed with money from her family. Her family? That's a joke. Sorry. Prof 
Professor, it's hard to know what to advise. But I cannot, at the moment, advance you any more money. Uh, no. Uh, okay, no. All right. Okay. I'll breathe, okay, then okay, you okay, start. Okay, okay. <gasps> yeah. Mm. All right, okay. Not too fast. I told you. Oh, I told okay. you. Go on. Oh. Now two handed three. Right. Simon's here. Oh. Hello, Simon. It was good of you to come so quickly. Any, uh,. Any news at the police station? No. Simon's rung the taxi firm. She was picked up here at 6.45 and went to the station. Oh. Oh, that was a good idea, Simon. He thinks she caught the 7.20 to London. Oh. Well, at least we don't have to worry that she's lying unconscious somewhere. Thank you, Simon. Dad, I have to go. I've got to pick up Debbie. She's with her neighbours. Thank you for staying on here. We'll find her, Dad. Don't you worry. Yes, I know. I hope so. I've got to rush. Be in touch this evening. Goodbye. Thanks for coming, Si. Bye. Now, keep Okay. Would you like a drink, son? Uh, no, thanks. Well, now, I'll have a beer if you've got one. There's possibly one in the fridge. How's the work going? Oh, uh, pretty well, I suppose. Good. Dad? You really have no idea where Mum is? Well, do you think I'd be here if I did? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's just so unlike her. It's, it's completely out of character. Evidently, it wasn't. Did you have a row? No, nothing like that. Simon, I don't know why she did what she's done. I'm as baffled as you are. Well, uh, have you been through her things? Found any letters or anything? No, I wouldn't dream of it. Dear God! we have never done that. I mean, it may seem stupid to you, Simon, but we've always respected each other's privacy. And even now, it never occurred to me to... go through her things, as you put it. All right. But I take it you do want to find her? Well, of course I do. Well, then, it may be the moment to break the habits of a lifetime, find out enough about your wife to make sure she's all right. Yes, all right, all right. Do you want any help? No, I'd rather do it alone. Right. Well, I have to go down to the taxi depot. The, uh, the driver who took her signs on, of course. No. Yes, all right. Oh, uh, can I use the car? Yes, of course. You will look, won't you, Dad? Yes. Now, don't treat me like an imbecile, Simon. This time yesterday, I had no idea of anything of this, and I only discovered her missing about 18 hours ago. Yes. Well, I'll go then.
Yes. Professor Brent. Yes. I'm Nikki. Nikki. Simon's girlfriend. Oh, Nikki. Yes, you'd better come in. Thank you. Simon's not here for the moment. He's won't be long. Please go. Please sit down. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. I had tea on the train. You came on the train from London? Yes. I got back to the flat and there was this note from Simon. It just said your... His mother had disappeared and he was coming up here. So I just upped and came. I thought he might need me. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. You didn't know, did you? Well, I knew Simon had a girlfriend, but um, as I'm sure you know, we don't get in touch with each other quite as much as we should. Are you a student too? Yes, philosophy and law, joint honours. Oh, that's very interesting. Philosophy is, and the jurisprudence. Uh, which is philosophy? Yes. So, why the law? Well, philosophy is what I wanted to do, and law might get me a job when I finish. Yes. Oh, Simon. Got a surprise for you. Nikki. Hello. Well, <laughs> what a surprise. Was for your father, too. Yes. Well, I, I see you've got acquainted. I'm going to leave you two. I've got still got that uh, job to finish, Simon, in the bedroom. So uh, do make yourselves at home and. Help yourselves to anything you want. It's good of you to come. Was it? Of course. Your father didn't have a clue who I was. I'm sorry. Why didn't you tell him? We've been living together for six months. I haven't been home in that time. Oh, and before that, Simon, we I, I told you, we, we don't communicate much. Rubbish. We've been together a year. Look at me, Simon. Can you honestly tell me that if I had been some nice, white, middle-class girl, you wouldn't have mentioned our relationship in all that time? Nikki, that's not fair. Answer it, Simon. I don't... Remember having a conversation with my my parents about any deeply emotional issue. We aren't that sort of family. I begin to understand your mother. Where are you going? Back to London. Nikki, please stay. What for? That was Nikki going, I suppose. Yes. Must have been embarrassing for both of you. Oh, we got over it, I think. She seems a very nice girl. She is? Very bright. You should have told me about her. I'd rather you didn't give me lessons on the way people should tell each other things. Yes, I asked for that, I suppose. I don't want to quarrel with you, Simon. Could you stay here tomorrow? Of course, if it's necessary. See, I need to go to London, and somebody must stay by the telephone. You know something. Well, I'm not sure, Simon. I need to find out. I need to check. But I will tell you. I'll catch the last train back. And we can sort everything out then. All right. All right.
What's the matter, Professor? A great deal, Sylvia. Uh, one. Just one thing. Oh, well, actually, I've been told not to deliver any more milk till the bill's been paid. What on earth could she have spent all the money on? I found these amongst all the bills. Pawn tickets, membership cards of gambling clubs, and other things. I didn't know she gambled. And nor did I. Oh, Edward, I'm so sorry. So, I came to get this. You see, I can't even get any cash from the bank. And I didn't want to take anything from the house in case the children noticed, but uh, this should see me through for a few days. Oh. Why don't you let me lend you some money? No. If Phil's got a no. good job, we're not sure. No, thank you, but no. Self-respect is in short supply at the moment, and I need to hang on to all I can. I understand. Well, I'll sell this. You'll be taken for a ride. You know what you're like. Yes, I'd be grateful. I've got 60 pounds with me. But I, I don't want today. to borrow. No, 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 no. I promise I will sell the tantalus today and give you the balance tomorrow. Oh, you're very kind. What I can't understand is how you can lend so much to someone. Oh, when we lent before, she always paid. You've lent before? Yes, uh... Three times over the last two months. She paid on the dot. Well, Miss Maxie, you're going to have to wait until my lump sum pension comes through. Are you uh, staying in the Midlands? No, no, I can't stay there. I'll still be moving down here. So there'll be the money when you sell your house, then? It doesn't belong to me. It's a university house. And what about your furniture? Well, that is mostly ours, yes, but um, you're not the only creditor, Mr. Baxter. No, I didn't suppose we were. Well, it's up to you, Squire. I mean, the longer the debt's outstanding, the uh, longer the interest mounts up. Well, I'll tell you quite frankly, I'm not paying that. No more after today. And if you don't accept that, then you can sue for the whole amount. Please yourself. Well, how long, then? Uh, a month or six weeks, as soon as I get it. All right. Six weeks. Then the interest starts again. Good. Damn. I could see Mr. D'Souza, please. Who shall I say once in? My name is Brett. Professor Brett. Just a moment, please. So, anyway, I went down to the phone box to report a fault, and they said the line's been disconnected. They owe 247 quid. I mean, it's unreal, as if it's happening to somebody else. I just can't imagine what's been going on. Can't you? Well, I've often wondered about those two. What? Well, I mean, they're just so civilised. Well, that's why I was always so comfortable here. I know, but looking back on it, Penn, did, didn't, didn't you find it unreal? Look, marriage doesn't have to be about rows and shouting. Well, yes, I know, but I mean, no money, no mother. What could they have spent it on? I'm, I mean, there's nothing new around here. It hasn't been since I can remember. Well... One or other of them uh, could have had a lover. Oh, come.
Come on, Si, that's ridiculous. Why? Well, just think about it. Can you imagine Dad with a mistress? Rough winds do shake the darling <laughs> buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too, too short, short a date. date. <laughs> I don't know about you, my darling, but I really can't wait. <laughs> No, no, now, come on, Si. You can't think of him only as a professor of literature. He did have us. Well, maybe she left home to have it for the third time. Well, you may have a point. <laughs> Hello, Simon. How did it go? Oh, very weary. Oh, hello, Penny. You're still here. I thought she'd have gone by now. What's wrong? Have you heard something? No. But we thought we'd like to find out what's been happening. Talk things out. This morning, Dad, the milkman wouldn't leave any milk until the bill of 47 quid had been paid. And the phone has been cut off. You'd better tell us, Dad. It seems that your mother, over the last few years, must have had some sort of breakdown and has become what can only be called, I suppose, a compulsive gambler. She spent all our money even the money to complete the purchase of the cottage next week. And on top of that, there's thousands and thousands of debts. Oh, my God. Well, um, how much are the debts? I don't know. As you've seen, they're still coming in. But certainly something in excess of 60,000 pounds. What? You mean, um, all the money you had to buy the, the, the cottage? Everything? It's much worse than that. All the money in our deposit account has gone, and there's a £5,000 overdraft in the current account. So you have nothing? Oh, less than nothing. I'm not counting that. There are over £60,000 worth of debts as well. But, but how could she borrow so much? A money lender lent her £3,000, which with interest is now £4,500. There's another in London for a similar amount. And the rest? She obtained a very valuable picture on approval from a gallery in London saying she was acting on behalf of the university. Evidently, they checked my name in who's who. And they want the picture or the money. Dear God, but that's fraud. Yes. Where, where is the picture? With your mother, I suppose. Or rather, whoever she sold it to, to finance her gambling. Do the police know? No. Well, they will. No, no, no. I, could, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stand that. I really couldn't. Well, what will you do? Pay them. My lump sum on retirement. I mean, I can't settle everything that way, so I shall have to pay them out of my pension. And they'll agree to that. If they go to the police, none of them will get anything. But, um, are you, are you liable for gambling debts? Well, I've looked that up, and they're not, strictly speaking, gambling debts. And the gallery's debt is, as you said, straight fraud. Oh, but, Dad, Dad, to mortgage your whole life! But what's the alternative? Have your mother arrested? Go to prison? Drag in the university, anything but that? Emeritus professor's wife defrauds university. make a nonsense of my whole life. So, I'd rather mortgage it. But how will you live? Well, I'll have to go on working, get a job. What, at the university? Oh, no, 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 I'll have to get away from here. It'll be bound to come out that Mary's gone, at least, and I couldn't bear all that. And it'll have to be a job outside teaching. So, I shall just have to get a room in London or something. Oh, Dad. 
What I can't understand is how it happened. I mean, how could she go through the whole deposit account? I mean, never mind the rest. Do you think I shouldn't have trusted her and insisted on a counter signature for every check? Well, you see, no, it was but... the deposit account she was using, and there were only two statements a year, and I didn't need to see them or use it. Yes, but you must have noticed something, Dad. Well, she was always complaining of migraines and visiting specialists and clinics in London. At least that's what she said she was doing. And you never went with her? And not once? I did offer. But I believed that when we moved to Rye, we'd... she'd relax and get better. So you put it off? Not consciously, no. Of course I didn't. As far as I was concerned, I was doing everything I could. Yes, of course. Did she talk of any friends? No. Now, if she'd mentioned that she'd met the Aga Khan at Tattersall's, even I might have noticed. Yes, but the fact remains that she's uh, used up all your money, plus another 50,000, and give or take the odd headache or two, life went on I don't, before. I don't see what all this is serving. Well, I'm really just trying to understand Are how you... Or are you trying to wound? Do you think I haven't asked myself all these questions? And what answers did you give yourself? Oh, they can be summed up in one word. Guilty. I would only ask that you tell no one outside the family. I would like to cling on to a public reputation anyway whatever we think of me in private. Good night. Good night, Dad. You were very hard on the inside. I don't think so. Can't you imagine what's been going on? Mum getting more and more desperate. The only thing she'd do was run. Yeah, and he, he didn't even notice. Yes, well, it's easy to say that now. Oh, he would have noticed. She'd been a text, but a living, breathing woman. <laughs> Well, thank you, Penny, for putting me up this last week. I really don't know how I'd have coped with that emptying house. Oh, don't be silly. Why don't you stay on for a few more days? You've got nothing to go to London for. Oh, I've got to make a new start sooner or later. I've sponged enough on you already. Oh, rubbish. Please do come and stay whenever you want to. Yes. You will look for Mum, won't you, Dad? Yes, of course, as soon as I've settled in. Though, how I go about it... Oh, you'll find her. So then what? Now, you do have my address, don't you? Yes. And I'll let you have a telephone number as soon as I have one. I do hope it's going to be all right. We'll see. Still, Sylvia wouldn't have found you a terrible place, would she? Oh, well, she didn't exactly find it. It's just an address of a friend of a friend, so to speak. But uh, oh. it'll be a start, anyway. This is Haddo. Huh? It's an unusual name. You have got enough money. I do wish we could help you. Penny, I wouldn't dream of uh, taking anything from you. I'm fit and perfectly capable of working. And I do have a little money, because Sylvia's sold all sorts of bits and pieces. A decanter and... Uh, that old half-hunter watch. Oh, Dad! No, 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 it's not important. When the whole house falls down, what was on the mantelpiece is the least of your worries.
Goodbye, dear.